All right, so I've really just rewritten this problem um, because I wanted to discuss some other uh, things about it. Um, because another way you can sort of break this down, I, I, I wanted to take advantage of all the nifty cancellations you can do, which is a good thing to do. But the other thing you can do is you can do this part and get five sixths and do this part and get negative one sixth. And with the advantage of doing that, I'd spare you all the calculation there, but you can do it. The, but it gives you a clear idea that this area is five sixths and this area is one sixth. And then another interesting thing to compare that to is if you didn't separate the integral into the plus and minus parts, what would you get and what kind of things would it tell you? Um, it's not like that's the wrong thing to do. It's in uh, different contexts, you'd wanna handle this integral different ways. Uh, so if I if I didn't break into areas, and if I just got um, you know the integral from zero to two of this uh, function, I would have integral zero to two of x squared minus three x plus two dx, and that equals. Um, uh, and by the way, this equals one up here. Um, so I still have the same antiderivative x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 2x, but now I'm just going straight from 0 to 2 without breaking the interval up. All right, and then what you'll get from doing that is you will get um, just uh, 8 thirds uh, minus you know, 2 so would be uh, 3 times 4 is 12 over 2 is 6, and then plus 4, and then we're going to have uh, minus 0 there. When I plug the 0 in there, it's all 0. Uh, and this equals two thirds, right? So here, here is, you know, you can see that um, the total area up here. So we see that the total area between the curve and x-axis is five sixth plus one sixth, which is equal to one. So that's what I would want if I wanted to just talk about areas. But if I were talking about one of these situations where I really need to think about the positives and the negatives. So maybe um, what this is giving me is um, the value uh, over time of a company. So, you know, if I was making money in the first year and then losing money in the second year, at the end, I want to say, I don't have, you know, $1 million. I have the positive minus the negative part. So this area, this integral is equal to two thirds, which is, you know, the that integral from zero to two of x squared minus three x plus two dx um, is equal to uh, five sixths minus one sixth. So you can think of this as like a one plus a two. That's the total area. And this one is a one minus a two, All right? So this equals two thirds. So if we call this A1 and this A2. So, you know, another important application that we're going to look at later is if I consider all the areas positive, and let's say this is a velocity curve, then what I would get here is the total distance traveled. But what I would get here is the displacement. So if this is a velocity curve, I have something that's moving to the right, and then as soon as the um, velocity becomes negative, then the object's moving back to the left. So this would be an object like if this were a velocity curve, let's say, then I would have an object that um, moved, went a, a five six units to the right, and then came back one sixth unit. All right. So where that where that object ended up is two thirds from where it started, but the total distance that it traveled was five six plus one six which is one so that so sometimes we talk about signed area the area considering the areas to be positive and negative um, that can give me what we call displacement or it can give me net value um, and then if I consider all areas to be positive so I usually call that something like total area then uh, it can give me total distance traveled or it might give me some other useful quantities, so area, actual area. All right, so there's a little bit of discussion about that. Our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start looking at homework problems. Um, our homework on this, just as a, a heads up or a foreshadowing, um, you're, you, there's still some things we need to go through, but just to let you know ahead of time, the homework is going to be um, 
chapter 7. We're sort of jumping around in the chapters. I'll explain why maybe sometime later, um, which is page 395, and the homework is going to be number 3 through 31 odd. So if you want to sort of try some of those out before, uh, before going on, you can do that. But I'm going to do some examples as we go, and one of them is going to be uh, number 6. So if you look at page 395, number 6, it looks like this. And it says, find this area. So I'll see if I can sketch it out and then we'll, we'll do it in the next video. So I have a graph that looks like this. And I have uh, y equals x squared. Y equals x squared. And then I have, uh, this is negative uh, 2x to the fourth. So it's going to be sort of flatter than a parabola. So here's y equals negative 2x to the fourth, and we're finding the area from negative 1 to 1. So here's negative 1, and we're going from here to here, and here's positive 1. All right, so we are doing this area in here from negative 1 to positive 1. All right, so here's what's different about this this is not the area between the curve and the x-axis the area between two curves all right so to do the area between two curves well it's pretty clear that the height from here to here is going to be the top function minus the bottom function so if you think of a, a representative um, rectangle in here. Sometimes that's useful to do. All right. The width of that rectangle is delta x, and the height of that rectangle, this distance, is going to be my top function, let's call it g of x, and my bottom function, let's call it f of x. So the distance between them is going to be g of x minus f of x. So in general, when I'm looking at the area between two curves, the area is equal to the integral from a to b of g of x minus f of x dx. All right, so if you want, see if you can apply this to our functions x squared and two, negative 2x fourth. Or, well, let's just go ahead and set it up. So this area, our particular area for number six, is going to be the integral from, so the limits are where does the figure begin and end? We're going from negative 1 to 1, negative 1 to 1. g of x is the top function, so, uh, and f of x is the bottom function, which is negative, so, so, so I'm going to be going minus negative 2x to the fourth dx. All right, so that's my integral that I need to do. And um, I think I say something else about that, but I don't know what it was. Uh, oh, yeah, that you need to always put the, the higher function first. The top function has to go first. So we're doing top function minus bottom function, right? Top minus bottom. Um, this makes sense because the top will have a larger y value than the bottom, so that when I subtract them, what I get is positive. I'm looking for an area, so it should be positive, okay? See if we can finish up this integral and see if you get the same thing I get in the next video.